according to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten directions, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. At that time, the Buddha was preaching about the benefit of the five precepts for the whole great assembly. Probably he was uh, giving initiation, you know, and then, and then doing that. So he said about the five precepts yeah, and the benefit of keeping it. Number one, uh, do not kill. Do not harm other people or not harm other beings. If you keep it, then you will have the benefit of having a long life and healthy life. Yes. And number two, do not steal. Do not take things as is not given to you. Mm. If you keep this precept, then you will have you will have the merit of being uh, born rich. Yeah, and noble, and then uh, no, uh, nobody ever steal your things. Yes. Number three, uh, do not uh, commit it, uh, illicit sex. If you keep it, then uh, uh, heaven and earth will respect you very much, and your body will be beautiful. Mm. You'll be born beautiful. Yeah. Of course, right now, if you are not beautiful already, then you keep this precept. Next life, if you keep these five precepts, next life you will be born as human again, you know, with all this, yeah? But not having to, to be born in hell or uh, vicious animals or suffering any kind, understand? Yeah. Keeping the five precepts, you will not go to heaven. You will just, it's just the five precepts alone, and you will not go to heaven but, or lower heaven, but at least you will be born a human. Okay, healthy, rich, and have no problem. Mm. Healthy and uh, having power, position, whatever, yeah? Okay. And number four, do not tell lie, but tell the truth. If you keep it, uh, the, uh, the con that you will have the merit of uh, res uh, a lot of respect from everybody on the planet, yeah, everyone you met. And whatever you say, people would believe you. Mm. Number five, do not take intoxicants like alcohol and drug and all that. If you keep this precept, the merit you get is intelligence. Yes. Okay. So every every cause have a consequence. Yeah. So he was preaching about the five precepts why you have to keep it, probably initiation, you know, must have to <laughs> keep the five precepts. And uh, the Buddha always prays five kind, five kind of charity, five kinds of offering, yes, um, which gives uh, the offerer immense, immense merit, you know, life after life, not just one life, okay. What is the five? Number one, the first one is if you make offering or charity to someone who came from far away. Oh, the person who came from far away means he is really in need. Yeah, even if he has money, he will not know where to buy food yet. He don't know where the restaurant it is. He doesn't know where to get the water, etc. So if you make offering to these people or uh, give something, you know, necessity to these people from far away, stranger to your, uh, to your village, that's number one. A good merit, immense merit, that's the topmost, some five of, one of the five topmost, yeah. And then number two, 
if you give offering to the person, to people who are going away, going far away, yeah, making lunch box or dry food for on for the road, you know, yeah, because if the person going away is just as vulnerable as the person who came from far away. He will not know where to stand, stay on the road, you know. If you give him like blankets, some dry food, something for the road, then it would be very meritorious. Of course, no? this is really need, needy, yeah. Not just the poor people only, yeah, but whoever really needs it, yes. Uh, one time I, I gave some charity, you know, and some uh, like $200,000 to some of the house burning in some area. So, and that area is not very poor area. So some of the Vietnamese people, not not the initiate, Vietnamese people who came to the LA center asked me, why you don't give money to the poor? You give money to those rich people. I said their house is burned. Even if maybe they don't have anything, it's even worse than the poor, because the poor people they are more used to it how to survive, and you know they used to with having less. But the rich people will be really vulnerable when the house is burned down and they have nothing in their hand. Yeah, and their children will be thirsty just the same as the poor people. In emergency, I help only emergency. I don't help the poor or I don't help the rich. I help people who need. Yeah, so that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. At that time could be that they don't need, but we just bring in case anybody need can use. You see. Yeah, because when the house burnt, all they can do is just run out. You know, maybe they don't have time to take their wallet, their credit card, nothing. Understand? Yes. And it until next day, until they can visit their bank, and then they have to prove their identity first, which is all burnt. You see what I mean? Until all this sort out, they need help. Yeah, it's just for emergency. I'm not staying there and giving them money every day or uh, mineral water all day. No, no, it's not. Just when they really most need it. And then they, they will help themselves afterward when they are less confused and, you know, settled down and oriented themselves, what to do, where to go. Yeah, okay. That's it. So number three, number three, that uh, if you offer for the sick people, make offering to the sick people, yes. Because sick people, maybe they're so helpless, you know, even if they're rich people, but they don't always, they cannot, some people cannot help themselves when they're sick. And suddenly they have a stroke and then they just lay there, they couldn't walk, they couldn't do anything. And if you at that time know it and bring their water, bring what they need to them, to their bed, or visit them in the hospital because even if they're rich, but doesn't mean they have family, doesn't mean people like or visit them. So if you visit them, you help them when they are incapable, that is good. That's number three. Number four, of course, you give food to the hungry. And the person just now hungry and you give food to him. That is good. That's excellent. And number five is the best. Is giving the true teaching to people who would want it. Yes. Not just anyone, of course, yeah? people who want it. So he said, these five ways of offering, if you know it and you do it immediately, whenever the need arises, then now in this lifetime you will have merit also, obviously. You know, don't even need to wait until the next life to see the merit that comes to you. Understand? Even in this lifetime. I don't know how about you, but uh, I have a lot of merit from that. Now that the Buddha said that. Not because, not because I want to do it for merit. It just somehow, it returned manifold, you know? Yeah. I do it because it's the right thing to do not because of merit, but now the Buddha saying here is a very meritorious. Yes, I can say that I lack nothing. I never short of anything. Yes. Even if I don't have, sometimes if I don't have a driver next to me or 
Just even if I couldn't park the car, somebody would come along and park the car for me. If I don't know where the ticket counts, somebody would come and tell me, here, I, I, I will show you, I walk with you. Yeah, thing like that, you know? And even if I, I give charity ever since I was a kid already, whatever I can, you know? And all the way until I grow up, until now, not just now because I know the Buddha teaching or because of this and that. And I, therefore, even as a kid, I give charity to, to the beggar who, who walk past my house. And when I grow up, even during marriage, I give all the time, whatever money I have, to the orphanage, to the poor people in Africa, you know, even not much, but I always give, always. So I remember... It's truly, as the Buddha said, that even, even in this lifetime, wherever I go, always people help me, you know, even I don't ask. Yeah, even people, uh, like when I was working in France, in Paris, and the holiday time, uh, you have to go on holiday in France. <laughs> Obligation. <laughs> yeah, the boss have to, to close a company if he has to, so that all the employee has to go on August holiday. I went on holiday, you know, but uh, I had uh, little money, not much. I was working. I never had debt. I always work and have some money, but not like I'm ri I was rich or anything, you know? Yeah. And then I was on the train, you know, and then just a lady from nowhere, she just sit next to me and she start talking to me. She's Italian. And she invited me to her house and give me a beautiful room in front of swimming pool and every day cook for me. I did not do anything to her. <laughs> yeah, she say like she asked, you know, why you come to Italy? I said, oh, I have never been in Italy. I like to see and all that. And I, oh, come to my house, you know, and then you will know Italian people more uh, firsthand, you know. <laughs> so give me every day true Italian food. I never ate any Italian food as good as that. Younger, you know, <laughs> less money, tastes so good, and then. <laughs> Every day when I swim and then go eat breakfast and lunch and dinner, and then her husband uh, uh, drove the the horse carriage, the carriage horse with two horses, and take me around the town in the horse carriage, beautiful horse carriage, yes, and then and then bring me into the orchard with full of apricot preaches apples or cherries and plums and oh whatever i want to eat oh they just take it take it eat eat more you're so skinny eat eat <laughs> italian mama <laughs> look at us you know you have to eat <laughs> we're healthy and well, healthy and wealthy you know oh my god and they didn't want to let me go it's so good so good like that so but i had to go i said i'm going to rome yeah, this is one of the stop. Thank you so much. I have to go. And I wanted to pay, but they don't take it. They don't take it. They push it back and back and back. So I say, okay, thank you so much. My Jesus bless you. And then I have to go. Okay, please come back again. You know our address. You know, give the card and give telephone number, everything. Come back again when you pass by. I say, if, if, yes, maybe, yes, maybe. <laughs> and then I left and go to Rome. And then there's a movie star, German movie star. He saw me on the St. Peter's Square, invite me to his house, or <laughs> oh, stay in one of his room and using his stuff and eat and, you know, take me out to restaurant. No, nothing, no, not just like he fancy me or anything like that, yes. Maybe he likes me also, but it's nothing, you know, like that. And then, and then I had to go because... And then I went to another country after that. I went back, I went to Florence. Uh, no, no, let me think. No, no, no. First, Florence is the lady with the orchard, you know, you know. And then, the, and then the Rome, the movie star. I, I don't remember his name. Peter, Peter something. I just remember Peter, but I forgot the the the, the last name. Peter, Peter. He he probably gone already, you know. Yeah, old time. Old. I don't know if he's famous or not, but I, I was <laughs> young and <laughs> ignorant, you know. I don't know much about this kind of thing. And then uh, I went to, okay, Florence, and then uh, Rome, and then now I go to Venice. Yeah. 
when it's also made a guy, made a guy, uh, <laughs> a photographer, want to take my photo, and I said, I don't have money to pay for this. So no, 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 you're beautiful. I just want to take your photo. Stay there, stay there. Stand over there, you know, and <laughs> sit over there. <laughs> and he invites me to his uh, hotel and then give me this and that, you know, a lot of love. Yeah. Uh, oh, I cannot tell you everything. It's too much. Even I told you in India, many people want to take me home to offering, make offering. <laughs> it's so funny. And want to marry me to her son, remember? Yeah, yeah remember I told you? Yeah. And even Dalai Lama was so kind to me. He always gave me medicine when, when, whenever he saw me. Even if, if he was busy, like in America, he saw me in New York. Uh, no, not near New York, I somewhere near New York or New York somewhere. Right. And then he said to me, wait here, I'm going to give you my medicine again, <laughs> you know, not just in uh, Himalaya, but in America. He remember me. He said, wait here, I give you medicine. This medicine you don't think is just cheap or like vitamin or anything you can buy at the counter. No, this is a homemade Tibetan traditional medicine and very expensive because it's comprised of not only herbals but also many of the precious stone substance powder, lapis lazuli and, oh, I don't know, I can't remember, but the long list of, of precious gold and substance like that combined together. And even his brother, the brother of the Dalai Lama, must buy if he wanted. And he gave me for free. Yeah, not just in Himalaya only. In New York, <laughs> and I give him nothing much. The first time I met him, I gave him only, I, I braided myself, you know, some, uh, uh, some. I didn't have much money. Yeah, I just uh, took some of the pine, pine, pine branches. Yeah, and I bought some of the uh, lychee, and I put the pine as a background, the pine leaves at the background, and put lychee in the middle. I bind it up with a ribbon, a cheap ribbon, <laughs> Indian color ribbon. Then I offered to him. That's all I had to give to him. The second time I had a, a beat at that time, I offered it to him only. That's it. It's not because of that he gave me medicine, no. He received me in his palace and asked me where I came from. And I say I came from, I, from Vietnam. He, he sat me next to him, you know, on the ch on the sofa, in front of him, and he hold my hand. He said, "We are both refugees. You know that." <laughs> it's very kindly, father, like a beautiful person, yeah, beautiful. <sighs> he didn't have to to receive me. I'm just one of the thousands or hundreds of thousands who stand in front of the gate, you know? Yes. Yeah, he's so kind like that. And, and I'd done nothing to him. He didn't even know me then. You know, I was nothing. I just, I'm really nobody, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> God knows. I just walk around, I say, you know, and one day I stand in front of the gate and I, say, I said to, I just uh, happened to see his brother. I didn't even know that his brother. I said, oh, I didn't know the Dalai Lama lived here. Wow, how ignorant I has been all this time. I wonder any fortunate person could ever see him. I heard of him all the time. I never had the fortune to see him. Uh, do you know when he come out to preach for the public so I can come and have a look? He said, never mind, you stay here. I go and ask him to see you right now. I said, can you? I said, yeah, I'm his brother. I can. <laughs> Just like that, yeah. And I did nothing to them at that time, just a poor mendicant, you know, just wearing simple sadhu robe. Yeah, look poor, nothing, rich, nothing. Mm. So he came and sit me next to him and he holds my hand and said, we're both refugees because <laughs> I came from Vietnam. Oh, it was so beautiful. Yeah, And, and then uh, even in... in in New York, he remember me. You stay here. I give you medicine. <laughs> yeah, 
He saw my face have some like maybe some mosquito or something. But business. Oh, your skin is no good. I'm gonna give you medicine. To get it better. Take it, take it. <laughs> and then he gave me the medicine. And his brother envious. Oh, even I had to buy it. And he gave. <laughs> he gave you so much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, he given me book also and him by himself. The the book that he 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 wrote or he he spoke and people wrote it down. He gave it to me. And then and then all the Tibetan around there after they know it, they say, "Oh, we could never have this. Yeah, I give to you personally. You're such a lucky woman." <laughs> the normal Tibetan, you know, they keep telling me. I think I have it somewhere in. Ch I don't remember where anymore. I had it with me, but then I keep traveling around, and I don't know where I put it anymore. Probably in one of the temple or somewhere. And then, um, what else? Yeah. yeah, and then I went to another place, Kashmir. You know, where the beautiful lake and uh, the, the path in the middle. And now it's kind of dangerous to go there because they're having war. But at that time. I went there, and one of the poor Muslim family, not too poor but not too rich, he has a boat, and he come and take my luggage and everything. <laughs> Want to invite me to his house? I said no, no. I I I pay if you, because he's a work. He work for his family, you see. So I say I have to pay. Yeah, but I don't have much money, so I cannot stay inside the boat. So you let me stay outside the boat. I pay less, but I pay. Yeah, uh, five rupees per day. That's not even, I don't know, about seventy rupees for a dollar or something like that. So it's not even ten cents or something. <laughs> and then even that included food, <laughs> just a fried rice with nothing. Because first he put fried rice there, put egg. I said no, no, please, I don't eat egg. So then he took it away, just fried rice. <laughs> And a sprinkle some of the green cabbage, whatever. That's it. Yeah. But treat me so nicely, you know. Yeah. All the Japanese and all the Chinese, they have money. They stay inside the boat. They make the boat into like a hotel, different rooms. Yeah. You stay. They stay inside. I stay outside of the the, the end of the boat, the pointed end. Yeah. yeah. Outside, there's nothing. He says it's very cold out there and uh, dew. And I say no problem. I'm used to it. So I just put up an umbrella, and then I lay underneath to cover my face area. Yeah, and I'm warm inside. And the feet uh, don't care. <laughs> yes. But even then, not because of money. The family, whole family, was so kind and respectful. Yeah, as if I something holy person or something <laughs> like that kind of treatment. Yeah. Oh, and then oh, many many story. Yeah, many story. So um, like stranger want to make give, want to have initiation for me when I was a nobody really <laughs> so, yeah. truly yeah and treat me so nicely second time meet him brought him me immediately to his house tell his wife to cook for me and invite all the neighbors come my great guru my big guru big guru <laughs> so big <laughs> big guru and everybody oh so funny this. So many, so many, yeah. And even Chinese monks are very nice to me. Taiwanese, you know. Oh, they stack money in my pocket. I say, no, no, I don't take it. And he stack it, and then he run. <laughs> yeah, roll money, put in my pocket of my rope, uh, put in my bag, and then run away, <laughs> like that. Or invite me to their temples, and stay as long as I want, no problem. Everywhere like that, Taiwan in Taiwan. At that time, when I wasn't famous, after I've been famous, it's completely different. <laughs> no, after after I have disciples, you know, become completely different. I don't know why. I'm still the same person. People don't treat me as good. But but even if I go alone by myself, then I still have good treatment all the time, everywhere, Europe, America, everywhere. Anyway, it doesn't matter, you know. This is like that. 
It's not like if you want to do good thing, people will praise you and say, "Oh, virtuous lady, you know, kong te wu liang," you know, like <laughs> Im- immeasurable merit, you know, one of the five, <laughs> one of the five charity deeds, you know, give it to the hungry, give it to the person came from far away. The Vietnamese came from far away, right? Yeah. So uh, the five, one of the five, they would say, "Oh, one of the five charitable, well, you merit immensely. <laughs> you have immense merit." Thing, like it's not like that. No, in this world, do charity is it's not that easy. And sometimes the the, the many organize some organization don't take my money. You know, maybe a few hundred thousand dollars is too little or something. I don't know. <laughs> But I don't have few millions to, to give at that time. I give what I had, you know, according to the time. Maybe too little, or I don't know. <laughs> But little, two hundred thousand can help a lot of people, you know. Yes. Yeah, in a refugee camp in in some third country, they can live for maybe at least some weeks, no? Yes. Mm. Some years, probably. Huh? Some years. Probably. Some years. A refugee camp, you know, or buy some milk for their babies, you know, napkin, whatever, you know. It cannot be useless. A few hundred thousand dollars, no, huh? Even little, but everybody little. Everybody, I can't just help the whole thing. I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know. I'm not like limitless uh, jewelry uh, owner or something. No, I just help what I can. Huh? Mm. <clears throat> I don't know why I tell you all this. What was it before? Uh, hmm. Huh? Five points, uh, five ways of uh, the best, the best five ways of offering. Yeah, the best, the best of the five is even is uh, spreading the dharma, tell the teaching to the persons who who needs it, who wants it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, because of that, I told you that for just for your example. That for my own example, I know that happened. I know that really works, because of all that I did since I was a child until now, and that's why I have never lacked anything. Even when I was a young, and poor student, still people take me in, my, in their house, and give me food and drink and treat me so kindly. Understand? I was really nobody. <laughs> I wasn't humble. I just really was. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, I was nobody. My Lord, I'm really, I was really nobody. I didn't even know that I was nobody. <laughs> I was nobody to know even I was nobody. Understand? Never come to my mind. I, I just been treated kindly wherever I went, if I'm alone. And then if if I'm with somebody else, it depends on my luck. <laughs> if that person, <laughs> if if that person is uh, bringing me luck, or at least don't take away my luck, luck, or at least don't have such a heavy karma that this will uh, shade over all my luck for temporary. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then some people do bring you luck. Some people take your luck. Some people cause trouble. It's true. You have to share half of the karma whoever next to you. So it is truly, if you do charity work, truly it comes back to you. Okay, so we go back to the five, five charity, uh, five best offering. Yeah, that give you immense merit, even in this lifetime. Yeah. I don't have to repeat. No, I repeat again. Okay, summary. Number one, giving things, giving necessary things to the people. Who came from far away? Number two, giving necessities for the people who are going far away. Number three, giving to necessity for sick people. Number four, give food to the person who are just very hungry. Yeah. That, that included this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> These are mouse, uh, hungry saints sitting around here. <laughs> so the kitchen team, you're doing merit, <laughs> immense merit. Yeah? 